talking about simple but powerful techniques to be more confident. And we're also going to have a bit of an organic chat. So Clayton, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for trying this. This is a new feature. I'm excited to be trying it with you. Live streaming on both channels simultaneously, man. This is uh, this is pretty amazing. So yeah. yeah, excited to dive into this topic today uh, and get your take on it. I think we this yeah. is the first time you and I are actually discussing this together. Yes. Uh, so I'm curious to see where it goes. Yeah, me too. So... Uh, you were the one when we were thinking about what we're going to talk about. You, yeah. You're the one that brought in the um, the topic of confidence. And so perhaps someone is listening to us right now and they're saying, yeah, maybe I don't feel particularly confident or maybe there's times that I feel uh, uncertain, insecure. Um, what's your like? What's your starting point if someone wants to develop more confidence? Where, where do you think to go mm. first with that? Yeah. So what I get curious about when I hear that with the coaching clients that I'm working with is I would love to begin to understand what lets them know that they're currently not confident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are they experiencing within themselves? What are they experiencing as symptoms of a lack of confidence so that I can really start to dial in with them what it is that they're actually wanting? Because, yeah. you know, I think what's interesting about confidence is it's kind of a, it's a normalization, right? It's like, what does it actually mean? Yeah, can you explain no, what a normalization is? Because that's that's an important concept. Yeah, a normalization means like it, we could we could say I want a relationship, right? Yeah. And you might say, oh, I want a relationship too. We're aligned. We both want a relationship. However, the type of relationship that I'm looking for mm -hmm. and the actual territory in the dynamic of the relationship might look very different than what you want. I yeah. might want a very growth oriented relationship where it's about challenge and waking up, and somebody yeah. else might want a relationship that's around kind of sharing and connection and not rocking the boat too much. And yeah. so when we say we want a relationship, if we don't dig into that uh, and create a shared reality around what that means, yeah. we might be really missing the mark. Yeah. So, you know, I know that there is a standard definition of confidence and there's a standard definition of relationship. Um, however, we these things are jam packed with uh, a lot of different experience for people yeah. that is very subjective to the individual that's wanting it. So, um, yeah. You know, the way that I see confidence is I see confidence as a mix between uh, trust and then also having some type of agency or competence in a particular arena. Um, yeah. And it actually goes a lot deeper than that as well, which I'm sure we'll unpack. Um, yeah. But that's that's where I typically start. But I like to check in with my clients to find out. Yeah. You know, do they share that same thing or are they talking about something different? Yeah, totally. I just want to say welcome if you have just joined us. I'm here with Clayton Olson. We're live. And thanks if you're also watching this after the event. We're talking about confidence. Uh, I'm just going to dig in a little bit with you, Clayton. So what's the trust component? Because I wasn't I wasn't expecting you to say that. So I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Are you talking about trust of self in order mm -hmm. that you ha believe you can do something? Is that is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's trust in self. And I think it's also uh, uh, it can come from a, a trust in life as well. Um, possibly yeah. even a trust of other people. And I don't think that it necessarily requires all three. I think one person can um, come to the table and they can trust themselves in some ways, almost like they can rely on themselves that maybe they're going to be okay or that they're going to be able to handle a certain situation or that um, they're going to be able to figure something out if they get into deep yeah. water. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that can all express itself as uh, and, and be a symptom of confidence. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So... I once did an Instagram post where I, I was, I guess, been a little provocative, but also there's a, a, a truth in that I was trying to honor, which I said something like, you know, confidence is a poor man's or, or poor woman's um, authenticity, right? Mm -hmm. So sort of suggesting that maybe authenticity is actually uh, a better aim for most mm -hmm. of us, mm -hmm. partly because you can be, you know, you can be authentically shy, you can be authentically doubtful. and sometimes owning where you are is the best way of proceeding. Yeah. Um, however, I also realized that that could be a bit like, um, <clears throat> how should I say, I'm going to, you know, I'm into my politics, right? So using a political metaphor, like people want to protest the government, right? And that's an important right. But it's mm -hmm. almost based upon the ability that the government provides enough security that you can protest them and you're not going to get mm -hmm. in like serious trouble, right? So, so maybe in order to be authentic, there's some minimum effective dose of confidence that's yeah. kind of helpful. Otherwise, it might be so preoccupying, like your your lack of confidence or your lack of self belief. Um, but I'm 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 curious how you think of that. A confidence and self belief 
Are they the same thing? Um, should someone strive to be confident and authentic? Uh, uh, you know, just I'm just opening up that territory. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good question, man. Um, I my first take on that is that it does take some type of minimum effective dose of confidence to yeah. actually be authentic, and that if you're really wrapped up and in insecure and it yeah. don't have a certain level of confidence, it's very difficult to rest in your authenticity. And so mm -hmm. it seems like one might be required for the other. Mm -hmm. um, and I also often think that people that are incredibly authentic appear as confident. Um, now, people that are authentic may not appear as competent at a mm -hmm. particular thing. In fact, that might be part of the authenticity is actually admitting yeah. that you don't have a certain competence or you don't yeah. know how to do something which actually then rings as confident in many ways, right? Um, yeah. But I do think there's an interesting uh, connection between authenticity and confidence. And, um, and, I, and I don't think we, I think authenticity, I really hold that as a high, a high bar because I do believe that if when someone can really own themselves and be themselves and show up as themselves, present to their own limitations, yeah. present with their desires, even if they kind of rock the boat, that um, that is a massive contribution to, relationship and I think then does appear as uh, as confidence because I think it takes a certain amount of trust in self to be authentic and if that's the case mm. then we're, we're going right back into this kind of prerequisite I see of, of confidence which is some level of trust in something yeah but what do you think about it makes that? sense yeah well, I'm, I'm, I'm vibing with what you're saying it, it, yeah. it seems right to me I mean one of the things that I was thinking about like if I have the experience that I don't feel so uh, secure, let's say in a social situation, um, mm. I'm probably going to end up withdrawing, right? That might be my default strategy if I'm not paying attention to it. And yeah. from that place, I'm probably less authentic. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, held with retreated. Yeah. Um, and so it occurred to me like, okay, yeah. So if we're talking about authenticity, we could say that sometimes our insecurities themselves are a kind of inauthenticity. Right, they're often mm -hmm. a, a kind of a learned strategy to 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 be with the situation um, that maybe takes us away from from being closer to ourselves. Right, so mm -hmm. I, I I'm curious if if you see it that way. You know, like maybe there's a part of me that feels insecure, and if I, I give attention to that part of me, there's actually less of me that I'm here to express. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. And so that it you're saying that an insecurity is a actual block to authenticity. Potentially. I mean, that's sort of almost yeah. the way that I, exp I experience that. I mean, God, yeah, I think it really depends on what we're defining as self. Right. <laughs> Clayton Olsen is, I've had a hard week, mate. It's Friday <laughs> afternoon. You can't just draw questions. Like that. <laughs> right. Because, okay. So for instance, um, you know, landmark education, the landmark forum from th that. Yeah, that's what comes to mind as we're talking about this. Like, I think good old Werner Earhart would say, yeah, you know, that if there's any type of insecurity about something, it might be a racket. And that might actually be you bullshitting yourself and being an authentic. Right. Yeah. Um, but unless unless then you're authentic about that inauthenticity. Right. Yeah. So you're owning those insecurities yes. I think as that's possibly being. Yeah. Stories and limitations. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, I think that's right. I think it's it's just like a lot of things in this territory. It's hard to do that at the moment you feel most insecure to yeah. then have the confidence to declare I'm feeling really insecure. Right. Because for me, at least, so sometimes what can go with the feeling of insecurity is there's some other thing that I don't feel completely great about right like it might be i don't know i feel insecure because this culture is a little inauthentic right or i feel a bit insecure because mm -hmm. this person is being egoic or i feel insecure because you know mm -hmm. I, I don't know if i belong in this company or whatever the mm -hmm. narrative would be so yeah. i think the maneuver is right it just probably takes some some practice but I, I like the direction of travel yeah yeah so something i get curious about because you asked me this in the beginning of the conversation like yeah how do you define confidence um what would you say confidence is then in, in this realm as we start, as it starts to dance with authenticity? What, how would you yeah, define I, it? Yeah. I mean, I'm almost defining it in, in the absence of something, right? Mm. More like when I'm confident, I'm not even considering whether I'm confident or not. Love it. I mean, so, Love it. so it's the absence of self doubt, something yeah. like that. Right now I know there's that, 
other level of confidence where maybe you i don't know it's almost like being on a run and it's not it's like feels way better than the normal run like it's just really working right or maybe you're on stage in your element or you're a high performer in sports or something yeah but mostly i think it's uh, almost like a lack of self-consciousness or a mm. lack of self-doubt mm. so that i can just be where i am and do the thing that i want to do and, and, mm. and kind of be in the experience mm -hmm. um yeah 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 so i'm, I'm getting a, a sense of like um, someone's capacity, if they're able to own, you know, hey, I'm not really feeling confident about this, or I'm not feeling yes. really confident about this conversation. Or if, even if they're saying, hey, I'm not feeling really confident about, you know, us or this relationship, I maybe I'm having yes. doubts about it or doubts yes. about myself in it. That may not be confidence on one level, but it's, it's sure as hell is authentic. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. I guess, in, in some ways, what I'm curious about is this conversation evolving to where we're placing the highest value on authenticity, right? Re versus, yeah, over overconfidence. And I, and I totally hear that. And I, and I just wonder how much confidence actually goes into authenticity. We're kind of back to that, to that conversation yeah. again. Yeah. And they, they, it might be that authenticity is also... Uh, you know, I, I often think about it like as a stage of development. There's a stage in mm -hmm. our development where we're really going to turn towards that. And prior to that stage of development, I don't think authenticity is enough of a draw yeah. to really kind of compel us yeah. to, to, to even be like, that's something I want and I'm taking aim at, you know? So I think in before authenticity is sort of on the developmental menu, yeah. confidence is more important. But I think what is confident is a little bit more like, ways of looking confident physiological confidence mm. you know mm -hmm. confidence to be in a like meeting. in your body language and the way those sorts speak. of things i remember a yeah. time when that was very much mm -hmm. you know you go to some kind of training or seminar and that's what everyone's talking about i yeah. personally feel less interested in that conversation i'm mm. much more interested in the authenticity conversation because mm. because i think the 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 uh, the, sort of the body language com conversation can lead to a lot of inauthentic modeling, mm. right? Sort of meaning like co copy the confident person mm. and and then you become more confident. And it's sort of like, yes, but you also like, who, where are you now? You know, so it's this subtle sort of relationship between the power of modeling, right? Which is, you know, something like neuro-linguistic programming. Yeah, we're going to model. We want to find the patterns of excellence, the, the language, the physiology, all that. Um, mm -hmm. but maybe at a certain stage of development, that sort of becomes the barrier. And actually, I don't, I don't want to model. I want to turn inwards and, and draw myself forth. That's mm -hmm. more of a conversation. Um, yeah. But, something I'll say, something I'll name to that is that, yeah. you know, I, I don't believe that uh, uh, our entire human existence is a form of modeling, right? We grow up and we're modeling yes. the, the, yes. we're modeling the yes. internal states of our parents. Yes. We're modeling the external behaviors of our parents. Yes. Yes. Right. And so a lot of what we pick up that we think is us has actually been copied and programmed by those that came before us. Yes. And so, you know, I think that's just we, we are modeling creatures. We are mirroring creatures. And so maybe yes. there's something really authentic about being human of actually copying others um, and being yeah. intentional about that. certain behaviors that, you know, like the idea of fake it till you make it. Um, you know, I think in some ways, fake it till you make it is kind of funny because what I would almost say to that, what might be a more accurate way of naming it is uh, um, keep learning it until you get it, right? Keep, yeah. keep failing at it and trying it until it becomes actually part of, Embodied. of you, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing. And is that authentic? I mean, well, I mean, maybe that's authentic to the human experience because we are modeling machines possibly. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just yeah. unpacking yeah. that a bit. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I... I but just because something came from someone else or your upbringing or culture, mm -hmm. that does not mean that it's inauthentic. I'm, I may be talking about a vector sure. of experience where um, maybe you look at yourself and, it, and it's like, rather than I'm trying to be that person, the mm -hmm. maneuver is I'm trying to be this person and mm -hmm. I'll learn whatever I can from them, but I'm, I'm stopping wanting to be a, a kind of a carbon copy or a model of, of another person. Sure. Um, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. that's actually about being a more individuated, you know, I human get it. being. I get um, it. I'm just going to so, pick up quickly. There's there's a, a comment yeah. here. Um, right. Angie, love seeing you two together. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Angie. And, yeah, good uh, to see you and hear from you again. Gemma says it's very hard if your confidence has been knocked. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah, 
And, and, and I think this is this is a key piece, this whole thing of doubt, right? Because I think when I come into this conversation, we're talking about confidence. What I see confidence as when people want confidence, I'm thinking, well, what is the the issue that they may be trying to solve? Yeah, and I do think it comes down to experiencing uh, doubt in a way that they're not accepting of yep. that doubt, right? There's there's no room for that doubt inside of their system and they're making it wrong and they're thinking, well, if I was just confident that would solve this, um, yeah. or there's a certain level of anxiety, dating anxiety, relationship anxiety, yep. life anxiety. Um, one more thing that I'm, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on with this is like, I'm almost getting this picture of, of confidence possibly being this real like ownership of all of one's experience. Yeah. Right. Like, so this idea that like, de- you know, if you have self doubt, you're not confident, you're not confident. What if that's not true? What if you, like the more that you can own that you have self doubt and that's actually part of maybe being in a relationship or yeah. part of being on an entrepreneurial journey. Right. And you can make room for that within yourself and you can say, yeah, I I'm human and I have self doubt and yeah. um, I'm going to feel insecure at times. What if what if that's confidence? Because the confidence is the container of accepting and holding all of one's experience. Yeah, totally. Does that resonate with you? Well, I mean, whatever we call it, it resonates with me. You know, yeah. like because I, I, in my language, I might have called that authenticity, right? Sort of being in in rapport and accepting of your deeper mm-hmm. experience. You know, so at, yeah. at a certain point, I'm less interested in the name of it and more interested in the substance of it. And I, I think you're totally. talking about, yeah, how am I actually? befriending the wholeness of my experience, including the places where I really like who I am and how I show up and maybe mm. the places where it's difficult to be me and there is self doubt and um, yeah, yeah how, how to talk to yourself in, in, in those places. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Got it. So let, let's, let's just, uh, for the yeah, I just, want, getting... super quick, I just want to say welcome. We've yeah. got a few more people joined us. Sure. Uh, I'm here talking with Clayton. We're, we're talking about confidence. We're talking about authenticity. If you've got a question for us, let us know. We're, we're probably going to be doing a live again in another couple of weeks. So we're also yeah. soliciting topics. If you've got questions or topics that you want us to unpack, um, let us know that. Um, Gina says London's calling. Hey to you guys. Yeah. Thanks for being here. So, all right. I jumped in on you. I'm going to give the floor back to you. Cool. Yeah. So regardless of what we call it, right, we're, we're talking about something here that's a mix between possibly authenticity, a mix between yep. um, confidence, um, owning one's experience, like just so that we can keep in line with the, the title of this video. Yeah. Um, if you're working with somebody and you're noticing that uh, there is a lack of authenticity, a lack of confidence, a lack of owning one's experience, how how do you hold a container or where do you encourage them to look or be, or begin to point to that perhaps can be an antidote to some of the suffering that they've been experiencing, uh, having a lack of these, these traits? Yeah. I mean, my go-to place is to, is to slow down Mm. and, and get present to your experience and, and, you know, to your point about owning your experience, I mean, learning how to own your experience. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm still on that journey, but having done some of that journey, that, that's, you know, that's a, that's a meaningful piece of inner work in my view. So, so part of that would be actually taking aim at learning mm. how to own my experience more. And what does that look le- like? Can you have, well, give an example of that in case that's new to anybody? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it, it might look like owning what I'm actually feeling. Right. So mm. I might want to be, um, you know, joyful. Right. I hear a lot of people that want joy. They want peace. Right. These sort of like higher states. Yeah. But actually, right now, I'm knotted and I'm mm. disappointed. And mm. so the, 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 the quickest way to relax that experience is often to, to, to be with it. You know, it's almost like let, let the experience visit with you. Mm. Um, oftentimes, I and I've seen this with clients, the fear is that you're going to get stuck in an experience. And so you don't want to get stuck in it. So you don't even want to really get close to it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, owning your experience is what's the actual experience I'm having? How do I feel? What am I sensing in my body? Mm. Maybe what are the headline thoughts? Sort of rather than what do I wish I felt or what do I, what have I been telling myself I should feel? Mm. So I think, I think the should, which is maybe a subset of the inner critic is a, is a decent piece of the structure in that. Yeah. Nice. Got it. Yeah. You're not even talking about necessarily 
somebody being in relationship and even communicating this yet to another person by really just starting with yourself. I think so. And, yeah. and actually turning towards whatever it is that you're trying to avoid, whatever it is that you're feeling like you don't want to confront and really being with that, not from a place of um, trying to escape it or, or judge it or, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I often find that like myself and other people that I've worked with is like, you know, they might get angry about being angry or yeah. they might be, they might get angry about feeling sad or they might get yeah. sad about feeling lonely. And it's like an emotion on top of an experience. Yeah. And what you're saying is just being with the purity of that emotion and accept and, and just feeling it and accepting it, that that's actually what's happening um, yeah. from as much curiosity and neutrality as possible. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And we're saying yeah. that this is a doorway into authenticity and, and possibly confidence. I think so, because that that is the actual experience that you're having. So if, if you're not with it, you're somewhere else. And so to me, you're less intimate with yourself. Mm -hmm. You're less authentic with yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Now, is it always easy to do it? No. Yeah. Is Are there skillful means, right? Like, you know, right now, you and I are live, right? If, if I have some difficult experience come up, I might not just say, hey, Clayton, I'm just going to take five and just get close to myself. And, you know, it might be that I do that later, right? Or it might be that you're in a super busy period at work. So there's a little bit of like, yeah, I'm going to deal with that. But there, there needs to be a time when you turn to it. Jack, I cannot tolerate that level of inauthenticity. <laughs> yeah. If you need five right now, you're going to take it while we're live. <laughs> He's not going to let me get away with this, is it? This one. Gee. Um, yeah. No, I'm just acknowledging that when something's difficult, you want to approach it from the place of most resourcefulness, mm -hmm. which is sometimes feeling, you know, well slept, well fed, having a bit of time and space on your calendar. And we yeah. don't always have that all the time. Sometimes the skillful means is this is so difficult for me. I'm just going to turn to it for 30 seconds, one minute or five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm actually going to give myself a reward. The reward is I get to zone out and watch some Netflix or I get to go for a walk or I get to have a bath or yeah. connect with someone. Because some things, it's not easy just to get so into it. And and for some of us, we do better doing that on our own. For some of us, we want the support of a journal or a coach. For some of us, we want a best friend. You know, mm. it's also being you know, self-aware to know what helps you get closer to your experience. And can yeah. you set it? Can you set it up that way? But the more you have that, in my experience, kind of the more you want it because it's actually a simpler place to live from. It's more direct. Mm -hmm. It's more accessible. You know, and and. To your point about sometimes I'm sad about being angry or something like that. It's like, yeah, you're talking about secondary experience over the top of the primary experience. And I'm saying if you can go to your primary experience more often, then you actually have less of the secondary experience about your primary experience, you know. But sometimes you have to start where you are. If what you're noticing is you're sad and then you go into your sadness and actually under that is anger. Okay, that's 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 where it is right now. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That's a very much in line with uh, uh, one of the paths that I've been following. I uh, was in uh, ACT therapy, acceptance and, and commitment therapy. Okay. Have you heard of that? Yeah. And it's I all about- I don't know much about it. Yeah. And one of the, the premises there is that actually how we build in self-acceptance is by just simply being with that primary experience. Like that yes. is actually the practice of self-acceptance, Yes. right? Versus it being some type of cognitive gymnastics. Yes. Yes. Right. Where I'm trying to figure out why something yeah. is the way it is. And then I'm OK yeah. with it. I'm actually going right into the emotional experience. I'm yeah. sitting with it and I'm not trying to run from it. Being yeah. allowing that that primary experience just to burn through me and, yeah. uh, I like you that. know, or, or drown me and to continue to breathe and allow myself to regulate around that. That that's actual the practice of acceptance. And one might even say the practice of factual self-love yeah. is staying present to something that is really difficult. Yeah. Um, right. And so this, like you know, that. this actually leads me to another thought then, you know, how are self-love and confidence related, right? Is it, is it that authentic confidence comes from a foundation of self-acceptance and self-love, like true confidence, not the kind of confidence yeah. where it's like someone points across the room and they say, Hey, that guy's body language is confident or the way that woman walks or the way that she speaks, yeah. you know, she's confident. Um, yeah. You're talking about sort of true self-confidence true self-confidence does it come from a foundation of of deep acceptance of yourself right right and uh, is that what people are actually after ooh. when they say hey i want to be more confident which is really i would love to accept who i am 
more fully and completely. I wonder. I mean, that feels true yeah. for me when I think about that, right? It does. Yeah. Because I would actually way rather have that acceptance and that self love than uh, coming off confident. It almost feels like confidence has like a utility to it in some ways. Like I'm going to be confident so that I can get this kind of outcome. The impact. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I'm going to be confident so I can transmit an idea on camera and, that, and people listen to it, or I'm going to be confident so people believe in me. Yeah. Um, when really, yeah, like perhaps the me believing in myself, finding that that foundation of self acceptance is yeah. actually what matters, and then echoes into everything externally. Yeah, I I think it's really big. I, think, I mean, what a foundation to have in life to just practice being more accepting of yourself in in every way. Yeah. One of the things that I found helpful to me is I when I first started doing this, but I find I talk to myself like, "Hey, buddy." Like I talk to myself mm -hmm. that way much more mm -hmm. than I than I used to. Um, it's That's like beautiful, a, man. Yeah, and and a lot of it in my world has actually been acknowledging my effort, even when the results aren't really showing up. Dude, you know what I mean? Like, right. hey, I noticed you. Like, you tried really hard today, man. Like, good on you. You know, yeah. and, including things that you know they might be simple things to other people, but in my world, in the way that it's configured, they're kind of hard. Yeah, you know, so. Yeah. It yeah. seems like a form of self-regulation there, even what you're doing there. Right. Cause like, yeah. you know, I can relate to that in my world where I find myself, if I'm feeling something that is really difficult and maybe it's like a worry about the future or, yeah. you know, I feel like I'm on the wrong path for a moment. It's, you know, I'll, I'll like put my hand on my chest and I might like just kind of rub my heart. That's and nice. Just be like, dude, I got you. I got you. I'm not going anywhere. Wow. You know, and I and it feels wow. like it does something to the critter, the animal in me, just to just to calm it down a bit, even though it seems, um, you know, very. I don't know. It doesn't make sense in some ways cognitively. It's yeah. Kind of like because we're so used to getting that out externally, rather yeah. than kind of giving it. Yeah. So so something silly about it, but it really does work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that as a practice. Yeah. So one other thing that's coming up for me um, is where this intersects with. Uh, like how people uh, how people are in the world, how people talk about mm. problems that we have in the world, right? Because my observation is that, and you know, you'll hear people teaching this online, right? Like, you know, so be really confident about what you believe in, mm. you know. But you you may also know I, I've tried to have a practice of having as few beliefs as possible, right? Mm. So that I can be with more experiences without necessarily always having to filter it through. Well, I believe this, or I believe that, or I believe this to be true. I'm sure I have all, all sorts of beliefs, but that's that's been a little bit of my practice. Yeah. And you know what? I'm also interested in some of these like bigger conversations about you know where are we going collectively and how are we kind of upgrading humanity and democracy and and it strikes me that it's, it, it intersects with this because um, you know sometimes being authentic means the ability to say I actually don't know. Right. I, I'm curious to know. I don't have the answer. I'd love to have an answer. Here's what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? Mm -hmm. That's a different thing than, than like, oh, I'm confident in my opinions, mm -hmm. you know, which may or may not have any actual basis with a, a, the more objective truth about how, you know, tenable those opinions are when they come under mm -hmm. scrutiny or just how they meet your experience of life. Um, mm -hmm. So in a sense, I'm saying the more you can be with the like the nuance of life and the nuance of your own experience, which could be, yeah, yesterday I felt super confident and today mm -hmm. I don't really feel confident. I actually think that is what we need in our culture at this time. More, more of that and mm. more, more of the ability to talk in that way between us. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. 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 I get that. And, um, you know, my response in that is like, I'm, I'm getting, as I'm hearing you that, um, there's like a continued invitation to keep moving away from this calculation of whether one's confident or not. Mm -hmm. Like just allow confident to be something that, you know, maybe, maybe people say that about you, maybe they don't, but like, yeah. it's, it's more about paying attention to what's real, what's actually happening, being present to your own experience. Yes. And it, by the way, though, this is fascinating. Now the word courage is coming up for me. Courage. Courage. Yeah. yeah. Having the, the courage to be with oneself because I think like, you know, I'm looking like what the difference is between confidence and courage, you know? And it's like they're, they're, the courage almost feels like it has a heart to it. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's actually the, 
you know, rather than being the band-aid over fear, which is confidence, courage is almost like the the antidote or the the yeah. the, the way in which one goes in and and explores the the dark room that they've been unwilling to mm-hmm. enter or look at. And so I'm hearing in your description there of this paying attention to the nuance, like that occurs to me as taking a lot of courage, actually. And and the courage to also be in the unknown, the courage to not know something, the courage yes. to let go of beliefs and strong opinions, the courage to be able to consistently update your view on something and not get calcified in a particular yes. perspective that yes. makes you inflexible. Yes. Yeah. I think that's an opportunity that is is sort of in front of us on on mass. Mm. Partly because we have access to so many more like so much more information and ideas than we ever would have. I actually mm. remember being in a lecture when I when I was in undergrad, uh, we had an American lecturer and she said something like, you know, most people's political opinions form by their early 20s and they don't they don't ever change. Yeah. And from the perspective of like mature adult development, mm. that doesn't really that doesn't really sit that well, I think, right? Like the the, it, mm. the actual ability to update what we think is true and good and right and how we proceed and what we include. To me, yeah. that's part of evolving as, as, a, as a human, right? Yeah. That you're actually, you're, you're fluid in some ways to the, to your own unfolding. Yes. Um, and in some ways having confident opinions may be the antithesis or maybe the impediment to a mm. deeper style of mm. uh, sort of authenticity and, um, what you were calling updates, I guess, occurring. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, another, I'm going to take another jab at confidence here, actually, because I'm, I'm noticing. <laughs> um, good man. I, I noticed that I'm updating as we're having this conversation. So thank you for that. Um, but I'm realizing too, when I'm working with clients um, and perhaps they need to have a really difficult conversation with somebody. Yes. Like a Maybe they thing. have some needs or yeah. some desires that they want to express with their partner or they are talking to their employees, for instance, or yep. anybody for that matter. And they think that they need to have confidence in order to do that, right? This is where I believe confidence can be an impediment to yes. authenticity, yes, right? And confidence can be an impediment to an actual self-expression. Thinking I that I need to be confident in order to reveal something because otherwise I'm gonna be taken advantage of, I'm gonna be mm-hmm. way too vulnerable, right? People are going to think a certain way of me that uh, I I just can't accept, right? Like I'm going to look messy or out of control or weak. Yeah. And then what ends up happening is, yeah, confidence becomes the the blocker to actually coming into true contact with the outside world. Yeah. Right. Where it's like, let's take confidence off the table and let's find the courage to reveal maybe your wants, your needs, your boundaries, um, you know, your self-expression. And then let anybody else other than you make the calculation about whether you're appearing confident or not, which actually isn't any of your business. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, the, well, there's the distinction, I guess, between my own experience of my confidence and caring about how someone else sees me. Yeah. Right? And generally, we want to try and be out of uh, out of that business. So, yeah. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. Do you do you consider yourself a confident person? Uh, I do, although it's not a self identity that occurs to me that much. Yeah, it's not really how I don't sort of walk around thinking, "Oh, am I confident?" So, right like, when, we were, right. when we were kind of considering this topic, that that was part of my realization, and that, you know, that could be a gift of being somewhat confident, somewhat often that I'm. It's not like the main thing that I'm filtering through. Yes, but I also. Um, I, I know that I'm quite impacted by energy. So what I also pay mm. attention to is how I feel around different people. Mm. And at my best, I think I notice like, oh, if I'm feeling less confident, it gets me curious. I'm like, well, what's actually happening in the dynamic here that I feel less confident around this person? And normally if I really tune in, it's Dude, probably beautiful. because they are trying to be confident all right or like we're trying to present themselves in a certain way or there's something i'm actually okay. in interaction with even if i'm not picking up consciously I'm, I'm kind of picking it up unconsciously so that's most of my experience if the, if the if the culture accepts however confident and authentic we are or aren't i i think it's it's a little um it's a little easier for me mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so here's here's what i love about that and it, i'm i think for anybody listening this this might be valuable 
But yeah. what I love about what you're doing there is you're not using your confidence or lack thereof as a weapon against yourself mm. in an interaction with another person, but rather you're, you're using your confidence as this thing that is flexible. It can go up and down and it's not right if it's up and it's not wrong if it's down. Right. It's just what it is. And if your confidence is down when you're around a person, that actually is really good information. Yes. Right? It doesn't mean that you need to be more confident. It actually means, wait a second, what's going on here? What can I get yes. curious about? Yeah. So if, because I've seen this where there are women that I've worked with and men yes. where they find themselves in these dances with people where they're not feeling confident. And they think, yes. oh, you know, this means there's work that I need to do. I need to yes. be more confident. It's actually like, wait, no, there's things that are happening in this interaction with the way this guy's being or with the way this other person's being that are creating maybe this lack of security. And that's something to pay attention to, not to try to make wrong. And then you think that you're defective and now you have to make up for it with some type of yes. presentation. Yes. So it, it's cool. It's like you're almost using the confidence barometer as like a canary in the coal mine to yes. help you determine who you want in your life and who you don't. I think so. I mean, it, it, to be able to be confident enough that when you don't feel confident, you can get curious about it. I think that's the that's the best practice for me. And I, I'm not saying I always manage that. Sometimes I only realize it a little bit after sure. the event. Um, but I think, I think cultures, you know, even just subcultures, you know, a family, uh, a workplace, a church may carry mm. a, a sort of a way that people are invited to be about this stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's inviting a different way of, of, of being with each other. Yeah. How, how do you think that the imposter syndrome plays into this then? Like somebody who, yeah. I, I think, you know, imposter syndrome can occur and by the way, let me know if you want to keep going this direction. We can we can go a different direction. Yeah, I'm good. I'm just, let me just flick here and see. Cool. If, um, uh, so we do have a, we have a, a question and a comment. So say what you're going to say, and then I'll I'll come back over to the chat. Cool. Uh, keep I was the questions say coming. How how do we see this uh, the imposter syndrome work with with confidence? Is the antidote to imposter syndrome confidence? Probably not. It's probably authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I mean, I, that that would be my my intuition. Yeah. 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 And I also know that imposter syndrome can definitely come up because you can get into a situation where you're like, wow, I really don't know the rules. That, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know the rules to this game I'm about to play. Maybe you get into a really healthy relationship with somebody and the mm -hmm. dynamic they're, they're giving you love and wanting you to be seen. And in a yeah. way where you're just like, I don't actually know how to be vulnerable. And I feel like an imposter in this. And so therefore it's like they're lacking confidence, like a confidence of being able to know how to have to create that dance. Yeah. Um, and yeah, maybe a little bit of authenticity would actually really uh, serve them in that point to kind of name that in, in that, in, in that place of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know where I yeah. was going with that, but it was well, just, what, I was what, connecting what the, the dot of. Yeah. One yeah. of the things that comes, um, comes up for me and it comes up in a lot of client conversations is you know, what I call permission to learn. Right, mm -hmm. giving yourself permission to learn, and part of that is having the authenticity to notice. Yeah, do I actually have this skill or capacity yet? Yeah, and if I don't, can I make that okay? Mm -hmm. Right, rather than sort of fighting under this sense that I what I should already know how to do this. So I'm often slowing clients down and saying, "Well, why should you know how to do this? Yeah, like, did you go to college for it? Was it mm -hmm. being taught in high school? You know, did yeah. you did your did your parents sit you down every night and just say, you know, for the next three hours, we're just going to see you and shower you in love, you know? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, just sometimes yeah. admitting. And, and, and so for me, uh, imposter syndrome is going to be a little like that because in any leadership situation, let's say, where someone might experience imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. there probably are capacities that you don't yet have. Yeah. You know, even, even if you speak to people, let's say prime ministers of the UK, that they reflect, oh gosh, five years ago when you elected me first to office, I knew nothing about how to like deal with the matters of a country. I'm so much better now, but now you vote for me less. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I think, I think just cutting yourself some slack that it's okay. You know, yeah. another piece for me in that is trusting my own guidance. So mm. realizing that I want to be open to other people. I want to have other people, you know, improve me and upskill me. And there is also this kind of voice of guidance, you know, whatever, however you think of that, whether you think of that as a higher self, divine self, 
that's that's about my life you know so the more i listen to that there is an intelligence in it mm. and if i'm willing to listen to myself deeply even when it doesn't make sense to me let alone make sense to other people that also builds a certain kind of you know authenticity in your path because mm. it's like okay i'm doing this thing that i don't even rationally know if it makes sense but i, I kind of sense it's what i'm going to be doing mm -hmm. right so i don't I, I, maybe yeah, my you're, you're really good at that well, sometimes it's been by necessity, right? But there's definitely yeah. some non-linearities in my life where I've just had yeah. to go, okay, all right, this is sort of what we're doing right now. Yeah. And it's it's not even easy to explain, you know? Yeah, a lot of what you do makes absolutely no sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, pre I appreciate that you're just being honest about it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right here, yeah. doing it live. No, I, yeah. I, I just, yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's but no, go. I do, I do actually feel like I, when I watch how you operate, you know, where you decide to move and kind of the yeah. things you choose to engage in, um, you're really great at listening to, um, and I think moving into that realm of like life happens through me, which we've talked about in the past. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to comment on that and then we'll, we'll go to the comments. One of the great things about life happens through me, right. Is that it's not all me. Mm -hmm. Right. So so if I make a mistake, maybe it's not all on me. Like if, if I'm really trying to tune in and listen and I sense, hey, life is kind of pointing me in this direction. And then maybe, maybe I hit a dead end or maybe it doesn't go great. Or it's sort of like I don't actually have to be 100 percent responsible in a, in a sort of burdensome way for everything in my life. Right. Because, you know, I look a certain way. I don't think I chose that. You look a certain way. You know, you have certain gifts. I have certain gifts. You know, I have certain frailties. You have certain frailties. You know, I, maybe in some metaphysical realm, you chose those before you incarnated. But I don't know that that's true. To me, that sounds like a human story to explain something. that. So, you know what I mean? It's like we let ourselves off the hook a little bit. You know, I don't know. This year might be really great for me. It might be really freaking hard. It might be somewhere in the middle. I don't know if that's all of my own you know, because I got up and I journaled so hard every morning. It's, it's like a different, whereas I think a former me would have been much more like, you know, I have to be in control of this and it, it's a reflection on me and I've got whatever potential I have and I, I have to make the best of it. And I almost like I can't afford to make a mistake. I can't afford to skip a beat. It's kind of like a, a bit more of an internal pressure, you know. So I'm realizing for myself when I have less of that pressure, it's easier to be authentic because it's not like my over responsibility or my kind of cross to bear on my shoulders is, is constricting me so much. I feel more free, basically free to be authentic. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's dive in here. I think there's a couple of things. Keep the questions coming. You've got them. Um, I find confidence damage is only ever healed by time, but at 47 time is not on my side. How can I speed up the healing process? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So I mean, is there anything that you want to say about that? I can say something about that. Yeah, I, I would actually let go of the idea of confidence being damaged or allow confidence to be damaged. I think that's part of life. Um, yeah. I mean, given that we can't control circumstances, right? We can control yes. our interpretation of the circumstances. And so uh, part of, there's a couple directions that I would encourage you to look in. One of them is, is uh, stepping into a place of uh, radical responsibility and as a thought experiment, um, really looking at the way in which you have uh, created, allowed, consented, or contributed to whatever it is that uh, feels like it was confidence damaging. And I know that can be a really difficult invitation. Yeah. Right? And it doesn't mean that it's true, by the way. It doesn't mean that it's true. But a lot of times when people are lacking confidence, in maybe let's just say you got really hurt in a relationship. Yeah. A lot of times that lack of confidence is predicated on the fact that they don't know why it actually happened and they don't, and they feel powerless to stop it from happening again in the future. Yeah. And so if you can courageously, and this is where, I mean, really working with a coach, having somebody there to lovingly hold you, point things out and, and be, uh, hold a container to, for this type of radical, uh, inquiry, it yeah. can be really helpful in helping you begin to untether, see your own agency, see your own power in your life uh, so that you can feel confident that you will be able to sidestep whatever it is that happened um, from occurring again, that we can complete that as a lesson in one's life, complete it fully and be able yeah. to open a brand new chapter. 
Um, so again, I'm not going to say that's an easy invitation. I know that what I'm saying, uh, you know, it can be uh, very confrontational and it might feel like it doesn't apply to every situation. It's mm -hmm. a great place, though, to sit in um, if you're wanting to bring power back to you. And then the yeah. other piece that I would focus on is rather than trying to rebuild your confidence, um, finding self-compassion, finding your foundation of self-love mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to maybe feel broken going into those feelings, allowing yourself to feel not trusted and giving yourself permission that there is no timeline that you're supposed to be on right now where like you should be healed by now. Um, or, yes. you know, you, you should be in a different spot than you are because it's often those judgments that actually are around where we're at that create the resistance that then entrenches us to staying stuck in that place longer. Yeah. So those would be a couple. I think that's well said. A couple places to point to. Directions of inquiry. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, one that comes up for me is, um, you know, when I hear confidence damage, I get curious if one aspect of it is to do with trust, right? Mm. That what I, when, when confidence has been damaged, one way that could be experienced is that my trust was violated. Mm -hmm. And so I, I might invite, if that's true, a much bigger inquiry about trust, because I think it's easy to default to, you know, a thing happened that violated my trust. And therefore, yeah. I, I don't want to trust again, rather than opening to the possibility that trust may be a theme that you're going to be working in this life. And so even in, when it's really hard, and even if objectively there is some uh, you know, bad behavior that happened, uh, just sort of it, almost like from a loving, accepting place, embracing, hey, there might be stuff to do with trust that's going to come up. That's a thing. For some people, it's less of a thing. Maybe their thing's another thing. So I've had these experiences where something might be coming up that's, I know, say incredibly frustrating, like an administrative thing where I'm like, you've got to be joking. Like how many times have we tried to fix this, get on the phone, I don't know, dealing with a DMV, whoever. And, and just moving into perspective of like, oh, maybe in my life right now, I'm meant to be experiencing some frustration. Mm -hmm. So if it weren't them, it might be someone else it actually allows me to be in a bit more rapport with it rather than feel like, oh, this thing over there has kind of got kind of controlling me. It's actually just inviting like, oh yeah, maybe I have some stuff to work around trust and it's not just the event or it's not just that person. Yes, that person maybe wasn't trustworthy, but there's actually something in your path that it, like the, the undercurrent of your life is possibly cultivating a different relationship with your own trust or mm -hmm. how to trust life mm -hmm. and really accepting the gauntlet, you know, accepting the inquiry from a, from a different place. Beautiful, beautiful. And, I, and I'll reflect back something that I've uh, told my, some of my clients that I work with, which I really think echoes this and it's my way of saying it, but is, yeah. you know, what is life inviting you to feel? Yes. Right. And how can you actually lean into that invitation rather than make it wrong? Um, cause I'll tell you like with my whole <laughs> new move that I made, like yeah. leaving Denver and coming up to the mountains, wow, life invited me to feel a bunch of things that I did not expect. And I was in resistance to a lot of them. And, yeah. you know, sometimes it's like life is inviting me to feel really isolated and question my decision. And can I be with that rather than being like, oh, now I need to react to it. Now I need to make yeah. it wrong. Fix right. It. I've taken a wrong turn. No, no, no. This is I I some part of me, and this is a spiritual belief that I have. Some part of me has orchestrated this because this feeling and this experience is exactly what I need to become more of an integrated man. And if I can turn towards it and say yes to it and just feel it, then that will complete at some point and give rise to a new experience that life will invite me to feel. But it's not always going to be positive, right? <laughs> Quote unquote positive. Like it's yeah. God, I would be such a boring person if I felt good all the time or if I was like always confident. I would be a boring one-dimensional dude. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. Jack, are you there? Okay. So I don't know if I'm live. And Jack Rose, could somebody Oh, you're there. You're back. Are you there? I am, yes. Don't do that. Dude, you did it. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I wanted to reflect a sentence back to you. So yeah. um, <clears throat> you said something like, um, I, uh, I accept this feeling and this experience 
in service of becoming a more integrated being, man. Yes. Yeah. 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 What a really profound way to look at something. I love that. Mm. I think we should yeah. be using it's that. Yeah. Easier, easier said than done. Yeah. Well, For nearly, sure, all, nearly right? all development is, right? I mean, it's yeah. easier to be the person talking about it than sometimes yep. the person experiencing it. Yeah. Um, it is a practice. Yeah. And a commitment. Yeah. Truly a commitment. Yeah. I hear you. So I've got a question here from uh, uh, earlier. Uh, oh, Gina says, thanks for your words, both to me and to you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, Gina. Great to see um, you again. Love your comments. Kea says, is it okay if just one of the partners work on the connection and the other does not? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Woo! Well, wow. I, like I, would, I, I got something to say about that. And yeah. It's, uh, Go for it. Come on. Let's okay. Hear it. I would love to, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So here's, yeah, I have some thoughts. Okay. There's a couple things in that comment and I'm going to just, I'm going to challenge that comment. Um, not because I think it's wrong. I think it's a very valid question. Yeah. Here. Um, but I would also, I would, I would say this, how do you know that your partner's not working on the connection? Mm. Because just like love languages where, you know, yes. I might say, Hey, you know, I'm, I love somebody with acts of service, right? Yes. And like, I'm not receiving that back, therefore they don't love me. I think that happens, we, we can be like trains passing in the night on a number of different vectors that people haven't written books about, right? Yes. So there could be a way in which your partner is, is actually working on a connection, but it's not one that you can see, it's indirect, okay? So that would be the first thing that I would point to, just to loosen things up a little bit. Now yes. that's not to say that he's, that he's absolutely working on the connection. I don't yeah. know. He might actually not care about this relationship. And if yeah. that's the case, that's really good information. But the other thing I'll say is when one person changes in a relationship, I don't think that the relationship has any other choice but to shift. Because if one, yeah. one element in the, the geometry of the relationship yeah. changes, the whole structure begins to change. So my invitation to you is to continue to focus on you, I was going to say becoming your best self, but I would say it's actually just becoming more aware, more loving, embodying the principles of the kind of uh, woman or man that you want to be. Yeah. And then noticing, does the relationship grow with you and meet you at that place or does it just crumble off? And you'll, you'll have an answer at that point. Um, so don't hold back your own, your own growth and service of the relationship. Oftentimes if you're changing, uh, your partner's going to meet you if they're connected. Yeah. And what I'm hearing you say is if, if they're not, for you, that seems quite a, a valid reason to say, actually, this relationship, may, maybe the, the now the growth is to get out of the relationship. Am I kind yeah. of picking that up right? I think so. Yeah. 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 And it might even be that you don't even have to make a choice about it. It's just going to fall away. Right. One other thing I'll throw into the mix yeah. would be um, checking out your assumptions. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think this sort of builds on what Clayton was saying. So let's say you're really in this perspective, like, no, I am the only one working on this uh, relationship. I would encourage you to check it out with he or her and just say, look, yes. I'm not saying this to be antagonistic or judgmental, but I am in the perspective that I'm the only one that's working on this relationship. And I just want to check that out with you if we have a shared reality about that. Now, you might find that that provokes some defensiveness. You might find all sorts of things come up there. But in a sense, you're trying to be authentic with someone, right? Like if, if I authentically have the experience that I'm the only person that ever brings the shopping in, am I hallucinating that? You know, am, am, I, am I re, uh, you know, because maybe I had experience in a previous relationship or with mom and dad or something. So it's, it's sort of just saying, hey, I'm in this perspective, but I'm not attached to it. But I do want to get some kind of shared reality with you because for me, working on the relationship is something I have a high value on. And for this to really you know, work between us, we're probably going to have some minimum effective dose of mutually working on the relationship. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when I mean working on the relationship to Clayton's point, this is what I'm paying attention to, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, going to therapy, I mean, reading books, I mean, setting up quality dates, I mean, looking me in the eyes when I'm talking to you, I mean, making sure that I feel heard. And, you know, if, if someone really hears that, uh, and, you know, maybe the defensiveness aside and they, they don't want to engage in that conversation, then, okay, then you're, it's a little easier to say that might be true, you know? So it just it encourages us to, to, to check things out, you know? Love that. Love yeah. that. And I think a key thing here that you're saying just to underscore is, and this is probably like 90% of it, 
Um, mm -hmm. I am in the perspective that yeah. dot, 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 right? I am in the perspective that I'm the only one working on the relationship. Or another way of saying it is I've yeah. got this story going on in my head that I'm yes. the only one working on the relationship. And I'm wanting to check this out with you to find out whether or not that's true. Yes. Because if you come to them and you're just like, look, I'm tired of being the only one working on this relationship. Yes. And you need to get your act together. Yes. What's going to happen? The, the guy's listening is just going to shut down. Yeah. Because now he's being, he's, he's being criticized. Yeah. He's being criticized and Able. he's seen himself in a way that perhaps now he feels like he has to defend against. And so, uh, yeah. that's just so key is, to, is yeah. to keep the innocent until proven guilty mentality riding as an undercurrent in your dialogue with him. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're really good at that, man. I think, I think you, you've got a big capacity with that. I think I've learned some stuff from you about that. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, the other cool thing about doing the practice that Clayton's talking about here, right? Like I'm, I'm in a perspective, I, I'm in a hallucination, I'm in a story that. Mm. Try it even if you don't believe it, right? So even if yeah. I 100% like, nice. know this is true, just use the language. Let the language support you because it yes. might just mean that you get more hearing over there and that might just be more productive. And it also forces you that you, you shouldn't be 100% sure about things, that it's not really your business to be 100% so sure true. about, right? So because true. no one really is zero and no one really is 100, right? So mm. even if Clayton's a great guy, right, there's going to be the odd time where, yeah, maybe he's got a shortcoming, right? Or maybe he's in his perspective, but he hasn't seen the other person's perspective, right? So you can be a a super person, but we all have blind spots, right? We all have limited beliefs. We all can only see from our perspective. We all have busy lives. We all have stress. We all have ways that we deal with things. We all have different values. Even if, you know, even if two people say, yeah, we love to adventure, like that's probably going to look different when you dial down into the detail, right? Mm. Or for me to feel adventure, I still need to feel safe. Whereas for you to feel adventure, you need to feel unsafe, you know? So mm. Yeah, mm. it's part of just the humility, I think, of being a human is that there is mm. always going to be some subjectivity, right? Even yeah. if you've really practiced your objectivity. And, and it, so we try and we try and not trick ourselves. And this is particularly true if you're triggered, mm. right? And I think I still got to learn a lot about this. But if I'm triggered, I've got to know that my perspective has narrowed. And so I've, I've got to try to do what Clayton's talking about here, right? Even if it's just I'm triggered and in my trigger, my story is. Even yeah. that is a lot more consciousness than... I might have sometimes had historically when I'm triggered. Yeah. And, and tr even if, let's just say, for instance, no, 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 no. He really is not working on the relationship. Yes. Okay. Let's just say that. Yes. You, do you know his motivations though? Right. Or like Jack said, is it ignorance? Maybe he just, there's, there's a level of education that this yeah. man needs to step into the relationship space in a way that feels fulfilling to you. And so even if that's true, he's not working on the relationship, you being able to bring this to the table the way that Jack's talking about and inviting him into the space could be the thing that actually turns it and has him step up. I see this all the time. Like in, when I'm working with clients that have maybe a little bit of an anxious attachment yes. and we do some communication training and help them sort their beliefs and really start to orient towards their relationship as a place of growth where they can really express themselves honestly, what they often find is their, their fear of the guy not coming along is completely unfounded, right? It's, it's something that exists in the past. And the guy actually steps up and starts doing things differently because of the way that you're approaching him and inviting him into the relationship. Yeah. 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 And you might find if you are someone who has spent more time thinking about connection and relating and these sorts of practices, it could also be that you do have more skill in this domain and it's actually appropriate Mm. for you to bring some leadership, right? As much as you may want a guy to lead in certain domains, right. it might nice. be that, you know, if if you've just invested more in this kind of education, there's something that you can you can also um you can also bring, you know? Totally. Um, but, but, I, Jack, I, but Jack, hold on. Why should anybody have why should they have to go first? Shouldn't he go first? I mean I'm pragmatic. What what works, Clayton? You know what I mean? Like Yeah. Um, yeah, good. You yeah. know, you and I have done lives. Before we came on, we were saying who's going to go first, right? There's been some where it's like super clear. One of us wants to go first. Maybe it's, you know, 50-50. Mm. You know, it's like whatever works. You know, yeah. I mean, I know you're being a little bit facetious there. but like, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think sometimes I get that pushback from my clients. Like, you know, well, yeah. now I feel like I'm just overgiving. I'm working too much. And it's like, you know, maybe if your focus is on getting a particular result, but if you realize that maybe this is a perfect 
dojo for you to practice a skill that you get to take with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. The reward comes in you facing this fear and having some courage and speaking. Yeah. yeah. I just want to throw something in quickly just because it's, it's, it's come up and it's something that you helped me with back in the day. So, cool. um, by the way, just I'm going to be conscious of time. I probably need to bounce in about five minutes. Great. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's one. Okay. I'll say this. We've got one question Great. and then we'll wrap it up. Cool. So uh, people vary in their ability to be punctual, right? For some people, 2 p.m. really means like 2 p.m. For some people, it's, you know, plus or minus. Um, some people are really good at tracking, like, hey, we said we, said we were going to like split this beer and they Venmo you immediately, right? Some people aren't. I remember, I can't even remember what all the context was, but I remember having a conversation with you about this back in the day, some stuff mm. that maybe I was had found frustrating, not actually in our dynamic and in a different dynamic. And, and, and you sort of saying something like, well, yeah, but in the, like the big picture, right? Like it's like in the big picture of the connection with someone, you know, that's one thing that maybe, maybe you don't super enjoy or like, but like you almost just got me to see that there are so many things that go into being a friend to someone or being connected to them. Mm. that maybe you can actually let go of the like, yeah, you didn't pay me that $2 back, right? Or you were five minutes. Or I know I actually have enough awareness to know you're congenitally late. So why don't I just get sober about that rather mm. than every time kind of get, get upset and kind of fighting it and feeling disrespected. And um, so sometimes there can be things in this territory. It's not to say don't take a stand for what's really important to you, but mm. it's so easy to subjectify other people based upon what you're good at and what you like. Mm. So I actually think people vary in their capacity to be super punctual. Mm. That's almost a bit like, yeah, people vary in their ability to do all sorts of things, right? Mm -hmm. Speak languages, drive a car, you know, play computer games. And, and so some, something about just allowing people a little bit more to be them it also often then will give you a bit more ability to be you you know the more mm. i can be me the more mm. you can be you and that that's actually mm. sometimes an easier um an easier path mm. yeah nicely said I'm, I'm hearing this kind of theme of like really picking and choosing your battles with discernment that's a good way of saying it yeah yeah cool man yeah All i right. love that yeah we've got a question here um, have either of you had clients who feel so disconnected from the hope of having a loving partner that they can't switch the hope back on? This is me, by the way. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's actually something, um, that, well, between clients and even just, you know, feedback on the channel. Uh, that's something that I've heard a lot, right? Because it's sometimes, and we've even done videos, I think, in the past about this, right? Like, I'm just destined to be single, or yeah. I've just accepted that I'm going to be single in this lifetime. And sometimes that is, um, it's not non-attachment, it's detachment. And I've actually done, I did a video on this. I think it was the back end of 2019. Mm. So when I was in New Zealand, I shot a video on this. So um, you, you could try and check that out. But the the, the sort of essential difference is non-attached is I, I'm actually, over, I'm actually don't mind which way it goes, right? So I might get into a relationship, I might not, and I'm going to be okay. Whereas detachment is, I've sort of detached from the possibility because it's actually too vulnerable or it's, mm. it brings up too much. And so I'm trying to create certainty. Um, so I think non-attachment is the path, right? To actually realize, oh, this might be your spiritual lesson that's coming to you through this uh, dating or through you know, not having yet the thing that you want. Yeah, I love that distinction. Non-attachment versus detachment. So non-attachment is actually what you want. Detachment is kind of like a holding at bay kind of not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because so detachment is basically says I don't trust life, so I'm going to prematurely decide that I'm not having another relationship, rather than sort of saying, well, life, if you want, you know, in the through me, right, life happening through me, if if you want a relationship, like, yeah, I, you know, bring it to me, I'm going to date, but it's it's a little bit less like I have to decide now for the next thirty years that I'm not going to be in a relationship. That's that's not really yeah. trusting the unfolding of life. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. And. It, I'll just add a, a cherry on top of that. Um, and I would say, I think that you're in a really powerful spot. I think actually the idea of giving up hope is the way to go, as counterintuitive as that, as that sounds. Mm -hmm. And this idea of giving up hope, what I would say is actually surrendering. So surrendering to the idea that what Jack's talking about here, which is like, we don't know. But I think when, when we're, what I have found with the clients that I work with, and I'm not saying this is you, um, but I'm saying that what a common theme is, is when people are hoping, 
or they're about to give up hope, there's a way in where they are still so, they're still actually very attached to this thing yeah. kind of happening, but they feel powerless around it. And so the way that they're showing up is there's some desperation, there's some possible neediness, or they're already coming to the table defeated and feeling like I'm never going to get this missing piece in my life that like is the final thing for me. And truly the, the letting go of that and saying, okay, like that will be done. I'm going to surrender this. And in giving up hope, but not like giving up hope and falling into like resignation, but like just surrendering it and saying, yeah, yeah. I'm done trying. Now, maybe you just get to have fun. Maybe you actually go get to be completely free in your dating because you've actually just let go of this idea of it turning into a relationship. But from a place of like playfulness, resourcefulness, freedom, um, yeah. and, and actually feeling okay. And so I, I think the work in this, and I actually have a, a client that I've worked with in the past recently about this is we uncovered that her, the way that she was orienting was like, you know, I've got, I've had a successful career. I've had a successful life. I'm now at the age where I'm finally ready for a partnership. I need to have this in my lifetime. And the, the work was around actually releasing that need and helping her arrive in that state mm -hmm. that she was waiting for a man to come along and give her permission to feel. Oh, wow. That place of wholeness, that place of completeness, that place of acceptance and feeling loved. Our work was actually getting her there first as a state of being. And then now going out in the dating world and it seeing does. what comes. And yeah. it, I mean, it's it's incredibly powerful. And for the last several I think, weeks at this point now, she's been having a completely different experience of dating and relationship. Um, and things are starting to occur that she wasn't seeing before. Because yeah. she's starting to change her relationship with herself. Um, I so, like that. Yeah. 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 It almost seems like you can get off the hope, hopelessness polarity and move mm. into surrender. And then yes. it's not, it's not a question of, you know, I don't need to feel hopeful or unhopeful. I'm actually just playing a slightly different game. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. something about hope. I, I don't, I have mixed feelings about hope. I, I feel like, a, and I'd love to hear you. Maybe hope. a different video. But yeah, hope, hope is like, I can, I can see its utility, but I can also feel in it, this thing of like, I'm, I'm, I'm powerless in a disempowered way, um, versus, uh, I'm surrendered to an experience. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we can talk about that another time. I'm All sure right. We'll probably let's share some more. Thank yeah. you for being here. This has been great. I enjoyed this. Love yeah, you as well, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks good. for coming on my channel. I'm, I'm good riffing. This is live streaming yeah. on mine I, hope, as well. I hope people have been able to see it that way. Let's find out. Yeah. But thank you for all your questions and your comments uh, and for being here with us. Thank you also if you're here after the event. And if you're on one of our channels and you want to check out the other one, I'm going to link at least beneath mine to Clayton. Yep. And I'll link to say. Jack's as well. Yep. So. And this is Jack Butler. Thank you for your intellect and your cutting <laughs> insights and uh, <laughs> awareness, man. Yeah. It's always yeah. A, a pleasure. Uh, dialoguing with you yeah man i really enjoyed it it was a really good back and forth so okay till next time we'll see you all right. soon thanks Take for care. being here bye, bye.